why your hourly rate is too low right now and how you can increase your hourly rate with ease. Eight reasons why your hourly rate is too low right now. Welcome to this video. My name is Robert Roth and all my career I make my passions to my income. And on this channel, it's all about how you can turn your passion into your online business. This video is about <laughs> eight reasons why your hourly rate is too low right now and how you can fix it. It's very possible that at least one of these eight reasons <laughs> is matching you and is matching your exact problem. And it's very likely that it's even a combination out of the eight reasons that I'm gonna give and explain to you. So listen closely and take everything that you can with you and go ahead and after you watch the video, fix your issues and your hourly rate is gonna increase. All right, let's dive in. Reason number one, your offer. Let's say you're selling websites. You're talking to a customer and you're explaining your offer to your customer. And there might be a problem with the offer you have. And it's the following. If your customer does not understand in detail what you're offering him, so if your customer is not understanding your offer, that's a problem. Because imagine <laughs> you want to buy something and you are not sure exactly what you are buying. So how are you gonna estimate what it's worth? Like what you're, what you're willing to pay for it? And that's the problem that your customer has if you're not able to explain your offer in detail. So your customer is gonna either try to move out of your offer or maybe try to decrease the price to a level where he figures that's what it's worth based on his understanding. Reason number two, what do you and what does your customer think that your offer is worth? So same example, let's say you're selling a web page package to a customer and um, now it might be that you know your offer has a certain value in the market. Let's say it's $3,000. That's what people usually pay for a web page package like the one that you're offering to a customer. Now it might be that um, your customer has a totally different understanding of the market or has no understanding of the market at all. What do I mean by that? It could be that your customer has researched um, a different niche of the web design market and found totally different prices that were like maybe way cheaper. Like, okay, for a package you're offering me, other people pay only 1,000 euros, so a third of what you're offering. Or he has no idea of the market and whatever you're offering, he does not know what it's worth and he might be a cheap buyer. So the question is, do you want to sell to cheap buyers or do you want to sell to buyers who like and, and, and admire quality that they are buying? So. What's the worth of your offer? It's just defined by, by what you think it's worth and it's defined what your customer think it's worth. Find the right customers, customers and explain it well so that the worth is also in the head of your customer. Once it's a match in your head, in his head, you got a deal. Number three, your self-worth. <laughs> Let's say you're selling that web page again your customer understands that it has the worth of the $3,000, like in the example before, you understand it has the worth of $3,000. Let's just say both of you are on the same level. Still, your customer tries to negotiate the price down. And if something like this is happening, that you are gonna be like thinking about it, maybe you are starting to negotiate yourself down in your own head, then you know that your self-worth is not matching the worth that you are trying to sell. So the website, the web page that you're trying to sell for 3,000 euros, you don't really believe in it's worth that. So it's kind of 
similar to like the reason that we were talking before, but you get the understanding. If something like you are negotiating yourself in your own head is happening, you have a problem with your self-worth, you have to fix that. Number four, reason number four. It's like, how well are you marketing? No matter on which channel you are marketing, if you're marketing on Facebook, on LinkedIn, maybe even offline, maybe you're marketing on a specific online portal, however you're marketing, one thing is very crucial. Are you marketing to the right potential customers? Are you marketing to people who need exactly what you have to sell? I give you an extreme example. If you are offering web pages that are perfect, a perfect fit for like consultants or um, service providers, but the people surrounding you on the marketing channels that you're using are all e-commerce people, they might be searching for an online shop instead of a normal web page. Correct? It's an extreme uh, example, but it shows what I'm talking about like in this reason how well are you marketing is all about knowing your customer <laughs> knowing your target group and the more you know them in detail the easier it's going to be to find the right people and to sell to the right people or the easier it's going to be for the right customers to find you and buy from you reason number five let's say you manage to get the right people, the right potential buyers to your door. So your marketing is great because that's what marketing does, gets the people to your door. But now it's about sales. If you have the people, people on your door and you're really bad at sales, <laughs> then you make it really hard for the people to actually buy your offer. So what do you mean you're bad or good at sales? Basically, what sales is about is you helping your customers making the final decisions that he needs to make in order to say, yes, I'm going to buy, take the credit card and send the money over to you. So you need to know which decisions these are, which informa informations he need and uh, give them that exact information. If you give them something else that might mislead them and they might even leave again. Reason number six your positioning. Let's say you sell web pages, right? <laughs> now there is a big market of people who are selling web pages, like freelancers, agencies, and how can your perfect target customer figure out that you are the right fit for him? So you have to position yourself in that market First of all, you have to choose the right market. So the web design market is huge. Are you building web pages for e-commerce? Are you building for web pages for like very large projects? Are you building web pages for small projects for solopreneurs? Are you building web pages for solopreneurs that are in e-commerce? Like I take the same example, but you see you can create all kinds of different niches. You can niche down into spiritual solopreneurs, for example. You can niche down into spiritual fishing people, whatever it is. First of all, create the right market and then in that small market, position yourself as the right person for the buyer. Could be you're different in personality, could be pricing, could be how you structure your offer, could be a lot of different things, how you do that. But positioning is key. Reason number seven, what is the quality of your offer? Let's say you actually sold your web page for $3,000 to the perfect customer. Hey, congratulations, you've done everything right so far. Now you deliver your offer, you deliver the web page. And let's say you made some mistakes. The customer says like, hey, the, the images are all pixeled out, the text, nobody understands what you really mean in the text. Uh, maybe there are technical problems, the menu does not work. I'm giving you extreme examples again, but let's say the customer is not happy with the quality of, of the um, service in this case that you deliver. That's a problem. 
because either he might want you to fix it, so your hourly rate goes down because you have to invest more time or your team has to invest more time, or he might want some money back, or he might maybe want all the money back, or at least he might not talk happily behind your back, which is also a problem because that's negative advertisement for you. And it might be a problem for you to gain more customers in the future, especially for that price. So basically, by not delivering what you promised, you are positioning yourself for lower prices. The question is, do you want that? You're watching this video, so I guess you want your prices up. Do the opposite, deliver what you promised, and ideally you even give a bonus to the customer, make him super happy. So he will maybe even deliver you new potential customers. That's exactly what you want. Reason number eight, the quality of your communication. What do I mean by that? Let's say you have delivered the offer, the customer is happy with the offer and he has a small thing he needs to change. And let's say you've agreed that you also might uh, give some support and then you don't deliver the support or he can't even reach you. And that's the part about the communication. Now, if he can't reach you for the support and um, he's starting to get to become dissatisfied, that's a problem. If even during doing your, your service for the customer while you're building the web page, let's say you're doing work, you have a weekly meeting, for example, with your customer while you're producing the web page, and then he does not hear from you for two weeks, for example, and uh, maybe one week later he does not really understand in your Zoom call that you're having with him, what have you now really done, what is not achieved, what is in progress, what is not in progress, how long is it gonna take to finish the next milestone. Everything that's unclear in communication is a problem. It gives an, an unsure feeling to your customer and your customers don't want that. It, everything that makes your customers unsure lowers the worth of the offer that you basically promised him and of the service that you're basically delivering to him. So do the opposite, be clear in your communication, help your customer to understand exactly where you both are at. And even if there's a small problem, you're gonna figure out it's gonna be all cool. Let me know if at least one of these reasons has touched you somehow and has showed you something that you can go ahead and fix in your business to actually increase your hourly rate. And um, write it in the comments, which one was your big eye opener? Or also just go ahead, if you really liked it and had some benefits of this video, go ahead and um, like the video and um, like, like the channel also, follow the channel so you get more and more of this type of content so you can build your own passion-based online business. All the best, see you soon, Robert.